Hi. Uh, let me just show you what I made for your file here. Um, pretty much the same file you sent me, uh, this test sprinkler CO2, although I deleted the sprinkler device and replaced it with a particle, which I'll talk about here in a second. I also added an open vent uh, just to exchange pressure and gas um, in and out of the environment while the fire and the CO is releasing. Um, so the first thing that you have to do is you go in and you define a surface type, a new surface type that's a supply. And in this case, I specify the mass flux of individual species. I then go, um, we'll just skip this, there's no thermal. I did set it as a spherical geometry and a radius, so I knew a certain surface area that I was releasing from. And then in this case, I came in and I said I want to release uh, 1,664 kilograms per square meter per second essentially. Um, that's a very large number, but it's coming out of a quite small surface area, so the resultant amount of kilogram mass you could compute, but um, you would, it would be much lower right, than this because it's coming out of a small area. Uh, no particle injection and nothing advanced. So that's the basics here. Just specify your max fl mass flux and what species, carbon dioxide, that I want to inject at what rate per square meter per second. So there's that. Um, so then, uh, once you have that, the next thing to do is to, I, I just use this um, draw particles at a point, but you can also, um, uh, let's see, you can edit, oh, sorry. Um, you can edit particles um, and you can create your own particle type here. Adding, adding at a point does kind of two moves, but um, what you'll see here is I've, I've created a particle type, CO2 supply. And that, I say the surface is a CO2 source. So I'm referring to the surface that I created earlier. Um, I say that it is stationary. It has a spherical drag law. Um, I'm not doing anything there. I want it to last for a minute. And uh, just sampling factor one means it's just there. And there's only one of them. Um, and we'll see that in a minute. So we'll say OK to that. Um, and then when I created this new particle, which I just popped in space here, um, you can kind of see it there. One one tip with the tool here is you can set your location here. I'm moving around the X, Y, and the Z is fixed. If you right click and you say uh, tool properties, you can set the Z location here at the height that you want it. Um, name it, what particle. So I would pick the CO2 supply particle type applied to this particle that I just want one and I want it only inserted once. And the age of 60 seconds was defined in the other in the particle uh, definition under here. But you can also edit particles and go through and edit that here. So we'll just say one here, insert once, constant, OK. At four meters, you can say OK. And then you can click on the floor on the XY plane to place it up at four, um, at four meters. In this case, I actually dropped the, if you look at the geometry, I put it at two by two, but I dropped it just slightly below the ceiling surface so that the sphere would be fully exposed and could blow gas in all, di all directions there um, from that point. Um, okay, and so you'll end up with a particle that has the particle type of CO2 supply, and that particle type has the CO2 supply, uh, CO2 source surface, okay? Um, and at that point, what we'll have is just a little injector point where the CO2 will be released from at the rate that I specified out of that little sphere that I defined. Um, I then added a, I'm going to turn these back on, but I added a CO2 gas 3D, um, 3D slice type. Um, and I just had it become, just fill the whole volume. So I, I want to look at the movement of the carbon dioxide within that volume um, over time. And um, I'm just recording the species carbon dioxide's mass fraction. So that's the quantity that I'm measuring in this 3D slice. So once you have all that and you run the case, um, you'll end up with, uh, with a little model here. And I in here, because I have 3D slice data, I can do some things like I can add in isosurfaces at different quantities that I'm interested in. I could throw in some two-dimensional slices wherever I wanted them, um, little point measuring devices and things like that. So um, the 3D slice, it, it records a lot of data over time, but it gives you a lot of information you can work with after the fact. Um, so without turning on the isosurfaces, just looking at heat release rate, uh, per unit volume, which is the fire. If I play back, you see it start from the source here and starts to blow, um, and it's being pushed off to the side, kind of over toward the opening here, seeking the oxygen source, and it's being smothered by the carbon dioxide that's being injected into the room. So if we want to take a look at that, 
um, let me stop this and go back and I will turn on the ISO surfaces and before I get going too far I have three ISO surfaces defined um, for the visualization here I have one at uh, 0.25 kilograms per kilogram uh, mass air mass 0.5 and 0.75 so an increasing um, density uh, of gas uh, mass mass fraction of gas so um, that way I can see different levels so the 0.25 is just kind of like you know a quarter 25 percent of the mass fraction up to 50 to 75 so when I play this back I actually get to see the three contours so the teal is the lowest uh, fraction and you can see it fills the room kind of smothers pushes over and starts filling you see the half uh, half mass fraction coming in and it's pushing over um, you can see the gas still uh, the fuel reacting a little bit up in that gas phase and then eventually it gets smothered out as the carbon dioxide continues to replace the mass volume uh, the mass fraction of volume here and then 0.75 is coming in and filling so there's still air exchange there's still vo uh, velocity coming in and out of this with air but it's mostly just being pushed air coming in and, and uh, carbon dioxide being pushed out right now um, as it goes out and fills this room so you can see that the that the fire was smothered here and if we uh, turn on mass so mass fraction over time this room would actually clear as well like we don't let it run enough but you'd be pushing the soot in the room out that hole uh, also so but it's good it's good just to kind of take a look at this um, and another kind of neat view I'll turn off ISO surfaces and just turn on the 3d view and you can see kind of a 3d volumetric rendering with contour of the gas filling the room um, kind of pushing into this corner uh, emitting from the source and filling the entire room uh, with carbon dioxide uh, you can change the properties of this a little bit too you can change the sampling factor and um, you know some different variables here uh, for that I mean cache that as well so there's a few there's a few options here but that really gives you a good idea that you can actually see the carbon uh, dioxide filling the room up uh, increasing the the mass fraction of of the volume within this room over time as the source continues to release so by the end it's you know it's pretty much 100 percent that's pretty close I mean it's it's a very very high concentration of carbon dioxide here so hopefully that gives you a sense of of what I'm talking about and um, and if you double click this you'll see the little point so that's the admission point of the of the carbon dioxide source okay so um, if you have any questions please let me know uh, hopefully this helps uh, helps kind of sort out how to do it so just remember you can't use nozzles for this stuff you have to use uh, some kind of a surface type that's injecting the species apply that to a single particle that you position wherever you want and release the gas rate you know that you've defined okay thank you